just ahead on CTV News tonight. Less than 48 hours and another young child is sent to the hospital with a self-inflicted gunshot wound. I've got the story coming up on CTV News. Plus, our area is expecting strong storms to roll in this evening. And we're talking buoy Bay Sox in our Wednesday sports page. Those stories and more, CTV News starts now. Good evening, this is CTV News for Wednesday, June 5th. I'm Byron Scott. And I'm Katera Jones. Thanks for joining us. For the second time this week, a self-inflicted gunshot wound sends a toddler to the hospital. Now we ask, how are kids getting their hands on guns? And what can we do to prevent it? Mariah Jalad has more. It was in these apartments right behind me where yesterday a young girl somehow gained access to a gun and shot herself accidentally. Now this is less than two days after an extremely similar set of events happened to a four-year-old girl in Cheverly. In this case here in Montgomery Village, a three-year-old girl was taken to the hospital just after 1130 yesterday morning. It's still not known how the child got to the gun, but three adults were detained from the home by the police. Montgomery County Police also obtained a search warrant for the apartment, but no arrests have been made in this case. Now, both of those girls are expected to recover from non-life-threatening injuries, but both Prince George's and Montgomery County Police are stressing the importance of keeping guns away from children. Unintentional gun injuries are a leading cause of death for kids. From Montgomery Village, Mariah Jalad, CTV News. Montgomery County Police say similar to the Chevrolet case, the weapon involved was a ghost gun. Police say a 15-year-old was charged with weapon offenses related to this incident. And Maryland State Police are investigating a fatal three-car crash that occurred in Silver Spring early this morning. The crash was reported around 3 o'clock on the inner loop of the Beltway at Georgia Avenue. One person was pronounced dead at the scene. The drivers of the, all the other vehicles and two passengers were transported to the hospital for injuries. The cause of the crash is still under investigation. Multiple rounds of heavy showers and thunderstorms will move across the area today. The National Weather Service has issued a flood watch for today until 10 p.m. It's possible that excess runoff may result in flooding of rivers, creeks, streams, and other low-lying and flood-prone locations. Flooding may also occur in poor drainage and urban areas. June is also Flood Awareness Month at Prince George's. The county is hosting several online sessions to help you understand how and where flooding occurs, reducing your risk at home, and prepping for disaster recovery. The first session is set for tomorrow at noon and will focus on watershed basics. For more information, visit PrinceGeorge'sCountyMD.gov and search Be Flood Smart. The, sub, the full 700-foot wide and 50-foot deep federal channel and passageway for ships to the port of Baltimore will open this weekend, nearly 11 weeks after the Key Bridge collapsed and halted vessel traffic to, the, to and from the port this past weekend. Salvage crews completed the removal of a 470-ton steel section of the Key Bridge Trust that had been buried in the river mud line and had pined the dolly for weeks. Crews say the work to restore the federal channel will conclude by June 10th. And when the GOP convention convenes in Milwaukee next month, Republican U.S. Senate hopeful Larry Hogan won't be in the House. His campaign has confirmed that the former governor will once again skip the party event. Hogan, you may recall, did not attend the 2016 and 2020 GOP conventions when Donald Trump was nominated. This all comes as Hogan tries to make inroads with Democrats in Maryland and as top GOP leaders have been noncommittal as to whether the party will help fund his campaign. The GOP convention runs July 15th through the 18th. Governor Wes Moore signs an executive order addressing the state's climate action plans. The executive order is called Maryland's Climate Pollution Reduction Plan. The plan requires that all state government agencies must submit their own climate implementation plan to the governor by November 1st. Through the order, agencies must include a timeline and how they will execute the plan. And I believe the clean energy transition can help us to do big things. 
like we can actually focus on a clean energy transition while also closing the racial wealth gap. That we can actually transition and have an energy transition while also creating pipelines and pathways for more people and for more young people to find themselves in that future. The executive order also creates the governor's sub cabinet on climate, which will report on the state's progress on the climate pollution reduction plan. On the COVID front, health officials are keeping a close eye on a new variant. It's called FLIRT. Officials say its name is, name is derived from two mutations. The CDC says the new variants seem to be more successful at evading immunity despite previous infections or vaccinations. That said, the FLIRT strains do not appear to be a cause for additional caution, officials say, of increased public safety policies. It accounts for nearly 30 percent of all new COVID cases in the U.S. Since the start of the pandemic, there were nearly 1.5 million reported COVID cases in Maryland. You're watching CTV News still to come. A Prince George's County Council meeting gets spicy over rent stabilization. We'll have that story after the break. Stay tuned. To sit with a dog on a glorious day is like heaven. We're doing nothing isn't boring, it's peaceful. When the right dog finds the right human, it's as if it always was and always will be. They protect each other, love each other, teach each other. More importantly, they never let the other down. I wish people knew that when you live in a small town like mine, it's much, much harder to find friends with common interests, especially ones my age. I often feel really alone. Same here. Seems like every time we finally settle somewhere, I have to pack up and move again. By the time I make a friend, a real friend, I have to say goodbye to them. I totally get it. I live in a big city, but it can feel just as lonely. It's tough, but it gets easier. Honestly, I totally get what you're going through. It's nice to know that like you feel the same. <laughs> you enjoyed my story. I really enjoyed your story as well. <laughs> Welcome back. A Rockville Elementary School principal is facing charges after police say he assaulted a student earlier this year. 54-year-old Andrew Winter is accused of assaulting a student on February 9th while he worked at Ritchie Park Elementary School. Officials claim Winter grabbed the student by their clothing and physically sat the student down on a nearby bench, then stomped the victim's foot, causing the student to cry. Winter was arrested after turning himself in on Monday on one count of second-degree assault. The Maryland Department of Health announces the state's first heat-related death of 2024. The victim is a 59-year-old man from the county. Officials want to remind you to never leave children or pets in cars, even when the windows are cracked, and to check on elderly neighbors and relatives. Last year, there were nine heat-related deaths in the state. And tempers flared at yesterday's Prince George's County Council session. At issue was a bill supporters say would create permanent rent stabilization. But the measure drew protesters to the council session. CB55 would, among other things, cap rent hikes to no more than 6 percent. Opponents want the cap to remain at 3 percent. They say CB55 does not go far enough. But this was done in the middle of the night with no transparency, and it really doesn't include the things we want to see that really protect tenants. And so I'm standing in solidarity with them, and I'll be presenting uh, a different piece of legislation that is more centered around the residents. 
And so this doesn't go as far as you'd like to go. And in what ways? Um, one, we really talked about having a rate, a lower cap for senior living facilities because a lot of our seniors are on restricted incomes, right? So they're not getting any type of raises. They're not even able to work. And so when you even have small increases, that has a huge impact on our seniors. The current Temporary Rent Stabilization Act of 2023 expires in October. Maryland Senators Chris Van Hollen and Ben Cardin and Congressman Glenn Ivey announced more than $650,000 in grants to improve road safety in Prince George's County. The city of Laurel will receive a little more than $450,000 and New Carrollton will receive $200,000 to develop comprehensive safety action plans aimed at preventing serious injury and fatal roadway crashes. The funding is provided by the Department of Transportation's Safe Streets and Road for All grant program. A former Prince George's County police chief has died. The Fraternal Order of Police has announced that Chief Roberto Hilton passed away on May 21st after experiencing a medical emergency. Hilton served as chief from 2008 to 2010 when he was forced out in the wake of a federal probe into corruption. Following his 29 years with the department, Hilton would work with FEMA as a senior law enforcement advisor and then as director of law enforcement engagement and integration. Before you book your next flight with Southwest, make sure you check their new prices for early bird check-in and upgraded boarding. The airline giant is raising its fees. The maximum price for early bird check-in goes up from $25 to $99 for one-way passengers. The upgraded boarding maximum price goes from $80 to $149. Southwest does not assign seats to its flyers. Instead, they let customers choose their seats on a first-come, first-served basis. Customers who previously enjoyed choosing their preferred seat may now be priced out due to the new fee increase. And still to come on CTV News. The city of Hyattsville is making mental health a priority for low-income residents. We'll have that story and more after the break. Stay tuned. <laughs> We said we'd never give in to a meltdown. <laughs> okay. We'd yeah. never babysit with a screen. We said we'd never let the toys take over. Mariella. Never leave the house looking. Well. And never let them out of our sight. Cars get hot fast, and kids can be at risk. Before you leave the car, always stop, look, lock. What would you do for clean water? For over 700 million people around the world, the answer is literally anything. Walk for hours, stop going to school, sacrifice sleep, health, money, and time. All for water that's not even safe to drink. It doesn't have to be this way. This is a problem we can solve together. Charity Water has been doing this for almost two decades now. We brought clean water to tens of millions of people. We prove every project and the difference it makes. With access to clean water, everything changes. Clean water instantly improves health, creates new opportunities, and reverses cycles of poverty. It can transform entire communities. Join Charity Water in our mission to end the global water crisis. Visit charitywater.org today. Welcome back. There's no home for hate in Maryland, says Attorney General Anthony Brown, as he announces a new online portal to report hate-related crimes. This comes after a steady increase in hate-related crimes reported across the state. In 2022, Marylanders reported more than 460 hate crimes and incidents. That's nearly four times the amount reported just a decade ago. 
The portal allows victims and witnesses to file a report online, features resources to support victims in the aftermath of a crime, and provides the option to remain anonymous. Law enforcement says while this is not a substitute to calling 911, it is an additional measure to ensure that safety for all Marylanders. And it's called the Maryland Equitable Justice Collaborative. The group co-chaired by Anthony Brown and public defender Natasha DeTarkey has a goal of eliminating mass incarceration in Maryland. The collaborative plans to complete a rough draft of recommendations by August and produce a final report in January in time for the 2025 General Assembly session. The group is working on a variety of topics, including education, preventing reincarceration and sentencing reform. While black males make up a third of the state's population, they account for 72% of the state's prison population. The city of Hyattsville launches a new trial program aimed at providing mental health services for children and families. The city, along with its partner Hope Center for Wellness, have created a pilot program for low-income city residents. The initiative will offer individual children and family therapy sessions beginning in July. The program will also provide art therapy for teens and offer community wellness workshops. Officials say the pilot program, which is free, will be offered in both English and Spanish. It's important to have representation and the people that understand the culture that provide those services. Um, so that's what the Center um, Hope Center for Wellness does. It has the uh, individual that looks like the community that we're serving uh, and understand the culture. So I think that um, it would help with the stigma that we have in our uh, um, minorities community about mental health. Uh, you know, if, if somebody is feeling sad, it's like you just don't have motivation. So I think it, it comes with a benefit because they understand and the culture. The city received $100,000 in funding from the American Rescue Plan Act. For more details about the program, visit the website on your screen. And still to come on CTV News. Simon Bugs has your Wednesday sports page and he's talking all things Bay Sox. Stay tuned. You don't want to miss it. Don't. What's going on sports fans? I'm here at Prince George Stadium, home of the Bowie Bay Sox, where I got the chance to speak to some players about their current series against the Binghamton Rumble Ponies. I'll have more what they had to say in a minute. Stay right there. Love what you do and you've already won, my parents used to say. My parents whose smiles were my first finish line, who championed respect, whose resilience built mine. Even more than I wanted a gold medal, I wanted a heart of gold, like the mentors who were my balance beams refusing to let me down, and the coaches who spoke out to anything out of bounds, heroes who never stood on podiums but stood up for me. Every shot I made, give the assist to those who since my youth were referees, ready to blow the whistle and end abuse. My name is Aaron, the leader of the group BTS. When I start feeling lost, I remember the words, love yourself, speak yourself. It might feel like it's always night and we'll always be alone, but the night is always darkest before the first light of dawn. Now, more than ever, we must try to remember who we are and face who we are. We must try to love ourselves and imagine the future. Life goes on. 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 Let's live on.
What's going on, sports fans? Are you ready? Because it's time for your Wednesday sports page. We start first with some baseball news as baseball season is in full gear and the Bowie Bay Sox are looking to make some noise. Who is currently hovering around a 500 record and they are in the midst of another series right now, this time against the Binghamton Wumble Ponies. I got the chance to speak to pitcher Kyle Brnovich and center fielder Judd Fabian and I asked them about what they think the team needs to do in order to come away victorious in these matchups. I think the main thing is going to be, you know, attacking, getting ahead 0-2, 1-2, and uh, trying to put guys away quick. You know, they're a good team, good lineup. This whole, whole uh, league is yeah, really competitive, so I think the main focus is just going to be getting, you know, quick early outs. They got some good arms over there, so, uh, you know, we just got to, we got to pitch it well, and then we got to come up with a plan of how to how we want to attack their starters, their relievers, and uh, we got to stick to that plan. And um, you know we've had some good plans throughout the season so far, so uh, really sticking to that plan. Bowie and Binghamton will take the diamond next tonight at 6:35. And sticking with baseball news, the Bay Sox affiliate, the Baltimore Orioles, will also be in action tonight as well. They will face off against the Toronto Blue Jays at 7:07. Switching gears to the NBA, it's a new era for the Washington Wizards as Brian Keith recently had his interim tag removed and was named the next official head coach of the team. Keith took over at the midway point of the season due to former head coach Wes Unsell Jr. beginning the year at 7-36. Keith's introductory press conference was held yesterday and during it he touched on what he wants to build on from the time he took over as head coach and as the team goes into next season. I think the biggest thing is, and I think Will said this, this is the stuff that I believe in, is pour into the relationship part. Um, I've already talked to all of our guys. They, were, they reached out to me as soon as they found the news. We, we want to pour into them as people to invest into them as people first and then into their games. That's how, how we're going to operate as an organization. That's what M Michael and Will believe in. And Ted, this is a, a relationship business. And when you develop these relationships, then you can really dig into the stuff that we need to improve on. So we're already into that. That's what I've been focusing on. And that was what I focused on from day one. Washington looked to add more talent in the NBA draft. The draft takes place on June 26th, where Washington has the second overall pick. And that wraps up your Wednesday sports page. Simon Bugs, CCB Sports. Thank you, Simon. Let's get a quick look now at our three-day weather forecast breakout. The rain boots and umbrellas were expecting heavy rain. Thursday, we have a 70% chance of rain and thunderstorms with a high of 85. Friday is going to be a beautiful start to the weekend. It's going to be nice and sunny with a high of 82 and a low of 60. Saturday will also be sunny with a high of 80 and a low of 62. And now if we look at our community calendar, this Friday at 6 p.m., the city of Laurel is having a bike parade. Elementary age children are invited to the Laurel Armory to decorate their bikes or scooters and show off their bike safety skills. Decorations will be provided and helmets must be worn. No registration is required. For more information, contact the City of Laurel Parks and Recreation Department at 301-725-7800. And that's the news for tonight. I'm Byron Scott. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you again tomorrow. Good night. to me is one that leads with kindness and bravery. How can we always come from a place of love for each other? How can we always try to do the harder thing? This generation of young people has taught me that it's really important to listen. I think listening to young people tell their stories is invaluable and it helps us learn how we can better help them. 
I know for me, me, being there for other people is a part of what makes me feel strong, and it also is what makes me feel like I'm living a life that has a lot of love in it. A kinder world is our kind of world.